So what is a goiter? A goiter is a diffuse enlargement of thyroid gland is called a goiter. Okay. Most of the goiters are due to endemic goiters or iodine deficiency goiter. Okay. It may be because of deficiency in the diet or maybe defective absorption. Okay. Then some goiters may be due to dishormonogenesis, where there is a defect in the enzyme synthesis of uh, thyroid hormone synthesis. Right? Then a solitary nodule is wherein one lobe is enlarged without any powerful abnormality in the rest of the thyroid. It's called a solitary thyroid nodule. A dominant nodule is one wherein there is a prominent nodule in the thyroid, but there is also a palpable abnormality in the rest of the thyroid. That means the rest of the thyroid also may appear feel a little nodular or little irregular surface. This is called a dominant nodule. Why is this too important to differentiate? A solitary nodule, the chances of 70% of nodules are solitary, 30% are dominant nodules. Importance of the difference is that a solitary nodule, the chances of malignancy is a little higher. Whereas a dominant nodule, the chances of malignancy are less. This is what is called a rule of 12 in this. Okay. So suppose there is an isolated thyroid swelling. Okay. And then out of this, this isolated thyroid, the chance of malignancy is about 24%. Okay, isolated swelling. Okay, then if it is a solid swelling and if it is a male, the chances are 24 into 2, 48 percent. If it is a female, it is 24 minus divided by 12, that is about 12 percent. Okay, this is for a solid lesion. Same thing for a cystic, isolated swelling, which is a cystic swelling. Okay, the chance of malignancy is about 12 percent. So, the chances of malignancy in the case of a cyst, in the case of a male, becomes 24 percent, in a female, it becomes 6 percent. In a dominant cell, in a dominant cell, it's still less. The chance of malignancy is about 12 percent, and in a male, multiplied by 2, 24 percent. In a female, it is less than even 12, that is 6 percent. Okay, so this way it is classified into okay, that the risk of malignancy. So, risk of malignancy is a solitary thyroid cell is higher, especially if it is male, if it is a young patient or a very old patient with the history of radiation exposure in the past. Okay, so the chances of malignancy are higher in these cases. So what do you do when you get a case of solid nodular thyroid swelling? Okay. Then how do you say this is a thyroid swelling? So the two important features to say this is thyroid is one anatomical location. Situated in the front of the lower part of the neck because that is the site of the thyroid. Okay. The isthmus is across the two, three, four tracheal rings. Okay. Connected to two lobes. The best way to palpate a thyroid is from behind. Okay. The best way to examine the thyroid is you know, when you make the neck a little extended. And you can see a prominent swelling in the region of the thyroid gland and ask the patient to swallow. Thyroid moves up with deglutition. What are the causes of moving of deglutition? One, because it is attached to the laryngeal cartilages and laryngeal cartilages move up, move up with deglutition. So what are the phases of deglutition? What are the phases of deglutition? One is beyond. When you take a food in the mouth, the tongue moves upwards, then backwards. Then the soft palate moves up to close of the nasopharynx. It goes across into the decimals which it blocks of the soft pharynx. The nasopharynx from foot from mental the pharynx. And then the larynx moves of course along with the hyoid bone. So the hyoid bone it has to take the epiglottis to near the tongue. So the hyoid moves up. Along with the hyoid, because of the attachment to the thyroid and cartilage, uh, laryngeal cartilages, the thyroid and the thyroid cartilage also take it, they move up. Okay, and then by elastic recoil they come down. So hyoid moves up, then the laryngeal cartilages move up, then all the three come down, and then the laryngeal cartilages come down. This is the phase of swallowing. So because of attachment, how is it attached? One is the pretracheal fascia is attached to the oblique line of thyroid cartilage. So that one could be the one cause for moving with swallowing. The second is the prince of berry segment, which is nothing but the condensation of the capsule, the posterior capsule of thyroid gland along with the pretracheal fascia is condensed to form the berry segment attached to the tracheal rings and the cricoid cartilage. Attached to the tracheal rings and the cricoid cartilage. So these are the two factors you must so whenever you examine a thyroid case, there are five things you must find out. One, is there any presence of pressure symptoms? Second, is there any retrosternal extension? The third, because it's a thyroid gland, is there any features of hyperfunction or hypofunction? And fourth, is this swelling a malignant swelling? If you answer these five questions, answer the examination of thyroid is complete. Okay? And then in the case of solitary nodular thyroid gland, most of the times it is U thyroid cases. Okay? So how do you classify the solitary nodules of thyroid? So this could be first a toxic nodule or a non-toxic nodule. A non-toxic nodule can be classified again into benign and malignant. A benign and malignant again can be classified into solid and cystic. Okay? And then these solid swellings can be, could be a solid benign thyroid, solid nodules could be, it could be due to follicular adenoma, a papillary adenoma, a Hardwell cell adenoma, 
or thyroiditis or it could be a nodule of a dominant nodule, a dominant nodule of a multinodular activity. A cystic, benign cystic cell, it could be due to degeneration in a colloid nodule, involution in a follicular adenoma, okay, and then hemorrhagic cysts, and it could be due to parasitic cysts. Then malignancy, malignant it could be again, it is due to a solid or a cystic, primary or secondary. So primary, it could be from the solid, from it could be from the follicular cells. That is from the follicular, it could be a papillary carcinoma thyroid gland, a follicular carcinoma thyroid gland. Okay? If it's from the parafollicular cells, it could be medullary carcinoma thyroid gland. It could be also lymphoma. Okay? Yeah. If it's cystic, a cystic medical, cystic degeneration in papillary carcinoma or cystadenoma carcinoma of the thyroid gland. Right? And then, second reason also can present as a solitary nodule from the kidney, from the breast, from the adrenal gland, could be a melanoma. Okay? All right. So this is how you classify solid thyroid nodule. So what do you do when you come across a case of solid thyroid nodule? Okay? So you must know on inspection, what are the things you should see in the examination one? Location of the swelling, size of the swelling, shape of the swelling, is it moving with respiration or not? Is it moving with swallowing or not? And then okay, sorry, not respiration. Move is swallowing or not, okay? And then what is the extent of the swelling? Is there only one swelling or other swellings? What is the location of the swellings? What is the mobility of the swellings on palpation? Is the lower border seen in felt? The lower border is seen in felt, very unlikely there is a retrosternal extension, okay? And these are then features suggest your hyperfunction or hyperfunction, and then history of any malignancy. So always ask the history of metastasis because the carcinoma and the thyroid can spread to the lungs, can spread to the bones can spread to the brain. So you must look for any chest signs, cough, history of cough, hemoptysis, then history of any recurrent engine involvement, the hoarseness of voice, in I mean ineffective cough, which have ineffective cough, then you should look for that. And then you should also examine for look for bone pain. Bone pain. Is there any bone pain in the patient you must ask? Then any neurological symptoms, history of weakness, history of any headache, history of any epileptic seizures. So all this history should be taken in the history. So metastatic history, history of hyper or hyperfunction, like for example, intolerance to heat or cold may be there, palpitations may be there, sweat to increase sweating, weight loss with increased appetite may be there, and then a patient may having tremors may be there. So all these features also should be examined in all these cases. I sense are very infrequent in a toxic nodule because it's a secondary thyroid hospital. In secondary thyroid hospital, more signs of cardiac symptoms are more than your neurological symptoms of primary toxic. So this you should see exam and then investigations. Look for the thyroid function tests you should do. Then look for again, you must examine about uh, thyroid function tests and then thyroid antibodies. For a thyroiditis could be also the part of the uh, nodule may present as a thyroid. So thyroiditis you should see. Then you should see for any uh, thyroid function test, the T4, TSH, T3 levels, you should examine for that. And then you should also examine if there is a family history of medullary carcinoma or thyroid gland. You must exclude a few chromocytoma by estimating the 24 hour urine examination for VMAs and then, for example, metanephrine, okay, nor metanephrine, metanephrine, okay, and these should be excluded. Few chromocytoma should be excluded because there is a few chromocytoma and the medullary carcinoma thyroid gland, part of the syndromes called mendel endocrine neoplasia syndrome. In those cases, always a few chromocytoma should be tackled first before you tackle them. Carcinoma thyroid gland because it's surgery in my prescribed hypertensive crisis. If I missed out on the pheochrome okay. so these things you must examine. Okay, then these function tests, then get an FNAC. Then you do an ultrasonography, can be done next. Is ultrasonography. What is ultrasonography show? One is the cystic or a solid swelling, and then it also helps you know you can do an FNA. Ultrasound graded FNAC can be done. Any presence of lymph nodes can be also shown, and then certain times, sometimes may show the features of malignancy, suggestive malignancy like hypervascularity, microcalcifications over there, length, height, height more than the width, and then irregular borders. So these are all the features. Then, how uh, come they have that um, hypoechoic the nature of the tumor inside? So these are suggestive. They don't show that there is definitely malignant, but these to be they are suggestive of malignancy. These are. So then, then next is an FNAC. On an FNAC, you can diagnose a few things, like right? you can diagnose a thyroiditis, you can diagnose a colloid nodule, you can diagnose obviously a cyst, fluid may be there in there, and then you can diagnose a papillary carcinoma thyroid gland, you can diagnose a medullary carcinoma thyroid gland, you can diagnose anaplastic carcinoma, you can diagnose a lymphoma. 
What you cannot diagnose the FNAC, a very important point is you cannot diagnose the differentiate between a follicular adenoma and a follicular carcinoma. Because these are dependent on capsular or vascular invasion. Follicular carcinoma have got a capsule and only if the presence of follicular cells in the capsule or in the vascular space of the capsule, then only it indicates that it could be suggestive of malignancy. Very rarely, very rarely it may show, the cells may show signs of Medically, so like hyperchromatic nucleus, then increased nuclear cytoplasm ratio, but very unlikely. Just the presence of simple normal follicular cells in the capsular space or vascular space indicated that, that this could be a malignancy. Okay, follicular carcinoma. Okay. And then the third is an of FNAC, which I already told you, ultrasound. So thyroid function test, FNAC, uh, ultrasound, then FNAC you should do. Then you should do thyroid antibody test, you should do. If necessary, if you are not, if you are suspecting any toxic nodule in this case, get an isotope scan. What is the isotope scan? Either you do with iodine technician 99 or 123. 123 iodine scan is useful because iodine, though it is not available in our place, iodine 123 has got a very short half life. It has got only 8 hours half life. Iodine 130 has got 8 days half life. 8 hours half life is there for iodine 123. Or technician 99. Technician 99 is got only 6 hours half life. Oh. We can do either with technician and iodine 120. What does it show? It can show there are three types of nodules. Get. One is called a cold nodule, a warm nodule, hot nodule. Hot nodule is one which takes up thyroid, which takes up the uptake, is taken up, the isotope uptake is taken up. Let's say the thyroid is suppressed. This is a toxic nodule. Okay. Then if it is a warm nodule, the nodule takes up, the rest of the thyroid also will take up the nodule. Cold nodule, it does not take up, the rest of the thyroid takes up. Importance is the cold nodule for malignancy. Well, but 80% of cold nodules are benign. Only 20% of cold nodules are malignant. A warm nodule, only about 4 to 5% are malignant. A hot nodule, only 1% is malignant. So, okay. So, this is to identify this. And then, always, in every case, always do an indirect laryngoscopy test. This is to exclude an asymptomatic recurrent angina paralysis. Because postoperatively, the patient may manifest as a hoarseness of voice. It may be because of a surgery or because of a pre-existing nerve palsy. So this could be a medical. So mainly it is done for avoid a medical legal problem. So a question is asked in the examination. Why do you do indirect diagnosis? Mainly for a medical legal to avoid medical legal implications in the case of a sudden therapy. So what do you do? What are the indications for surgery? The indications for surgery in these cases are one: the risk of neoplasia. So what is the risk of neoplasia or malignancy? Patients age extremes of age, very old, females more than 40 or females, then gender, male sex, solid nodule in the male, most of the times it is a malignant. Children, young patients with a nodule, whether male or a female, one nodule is there, then that could be a malignant nodule, okay. Then recurrent angina involvement, hoarseness of voice is there, involvement. Suppose the heart, irregular, fixed, related fixed tumor. It indicates malignant. So these are the indicators for malignant for you to do. Then the toxic nodule. This is a toxic nodule, you have to remove it because it is producing the hormone and suppressing the rest of the thyroid. So if once you remove this, the rest of the thyroid will uh, will be uh, removed from this inhibition. And then pressure symptoms. Pressure like dysphagia, dyspnea. Okay? Right. So that also is an indicator of surgery. Then cosmetic. Cosmetic is another indicator of surgery. And then patient might ask, patient wants to get in. That also indicated process. And what do you do for it? You do a hemithyroidectomy. What is hemithyroid? Now the term hemithyroid is also going. Lobectomy. Nowadays, lobectomy is also called lobe plus isthmus. Previously, it's called hemithyroid. Your examiners might want the word hemithyroidectomy. So in the exam, use the term hemithyroidectomy. Okay? Lobectomy plus isthmatic. Because most of the nodules are present in the of the lobe and the isthmus. And because if you remove only the lobe, what happens is that isthmus may hypertrophy and it might appear like a recurrent nodule. Okay? So that's why if you do a lobectomy plus isthmus. Mm. Okay. And if it is a malignant, the findings you'll find in papillary carcinoma, you'll find grooved nuclei. Okay? Orphan any nuclei may be present with the nuclear cytoplasmic inclusions may be there. Nuclear, intranuclear cytoplasmic inclusions may be there. Grooved nuclei, crowded nuclei. Papillary projections may be present and then samoma bodies, which are nothing but sloughed off papillary, clumps of sloughed off papillary. If these present, present then it could be suggestive of papillary carcinoma. Like I said, follicular carcinoma and adenoma cannot be de de differentiated except in the presence of capsule or vascular, which can be done only on a paraffin section. Even on a frozen section, you cannot make out. Okay? Then medullary carcinoma thyroid can be 